All right, amen. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Vashon Island Community Church. Good morning, everybody who's here, everybody who's uh, joining us online and sneaking in the back. And uh, someone's listening to Facebook Live right now because I can hear myself. So there we go. All right, awesome. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Mike. I'm the pastor here. I'm sure we'll have plenty of other people uh, who are still trying to get their get out of their PJs right now and stuff like that. Uh, let's go ahead and just bow our heads and uh, turn our attention to God this morning. Living God, we're just so grateful that you give us the privilege of worshiping you. God, we're so grateful that we get to be your people, Lord. We're so grateful that we get to center ourselves on you today. Living God, we just invite your presence here among us, Lord. Lord, for those of us who are worshiping from home, those of us who are worshiping uh, on break at work, those of us who have gathered here who are still on their way, Lord, for all those who won't be able to make it today, Lord, we just pray that each one of us would experience your presence this morning. Lord, that you would just open our eyes to you. Open our eyes to your reality, God. May we sense your presence today, Lord. Lord, for... Um, this island, we pray that hearts and eyes would be drawn towards you. Lord, for every church that gathers to this morning, naming the name of Jesus, however they're gathering, we just pray your presence there. And God, we just invite you to make much of yourself this morning inside the walls of these churches and across this island. We pray that through your son's name. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand up in the house of God and uh, you're going to read Psalm 26 as our call to worship this morning. Vindicate me, Lord, for I have led a blameless life. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, Lord, and try me and examine my heart and my mind. For I have always been mindful of your unfailing love and have lived in reliance on your faithfulness. I do not sit with the deceitful, nor do I associate with hypocrites. I abhor the, the assembly of evildoers and refuse to sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go about your altar, Lord, proclaiming aloud your praise and telling of all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. Do not take away my soul along with sinners, my life with those who are bloodthirsty, in whose hands are wicked schemes, whose right hand is full of bribes. I lead a blameless life. Deliver me and be merciful to me. My feet stand on level ground. In the great congregation, I will praise the Lord. Amen. Let's praise the Lord this morning. to thee with 
with God the Father and Holy Ghost to Thee. Hymn and chant and high thanksgiving and unwearied praises be. Honor, glory, and dominion and eternal
joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me But your love never fails Oh no, no, no No, 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 no One more time, you stay the same You stay the same through the ages Your love never changes Maybe pain in the light But joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me Your love never fails Oh no, 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 no No, 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 no No, no, no Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. 
spirit, fire, fan the flame. Ask you for your holy name. We need you now, Jesus. Oh, burn in everything. Oh, mighty breath of God, yes. Oh, upon this place. Oh, we thank you. to come in power and grace. See it again. Oh, mighty breath of God. Won't you come? Oh, yeah, yes. Upon this place. Let your wind blow here in this place. Let your fire fall, yes. Let your wind blow. Let your fire fall. Let your wind blow. We worship. Let your fire fall, yes. Let your wind blow. Let your wind blow. Let your fire fall. And blow, mighty breath of God. Sing it out. Oh, upon this place. Let your wind blow. Let your 
Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loud and praise. Teach me some melodious song, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I To our at home, Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger into ghost his precious blood. You may be seated. Mm. Living God, living God, we just confess that you are the the very center of this gathering, Lord.
You're the one to whom we've sung this morning. You're the one whose goodness we've praised. You're the reason we're here. Living God, I just pray you would capture our hearts afresh. Capture our hearts afresh, God. Living God, as we look out on a world, on a on a neighborhood that doesn't know you, on a community that doesn't know you. God, help us to be a church that is passionate for you. Lord, that a salt that's lost its savor is no good, that a, a light hidden under a bushel does no one any favors. But God, you tell us that we're a city set on a hill. God, you tell us that we're the salt that preserves this earth and gives it flavor. But God, we just seem to be a church so distracted from you. God, God, forgive forgive us for being a church church that just just doesn't doesn't seem seem focused focused on on you at times. God, make us a church church that that is hungrier for your presence. presence. God, God, make make us a church church that that drinks drinks deep deep of your spirit. spirit. God, help us to be a church church that that can outgrow outgrow the silliness silliness of American American spirituality. spirituality. And dive dive deep into into you. God, I ask that you just burn away all of the chaff, Lord, in our lives and in this church. Lord, that you would just purify us and make us fruitful for your own purposes. God, cause us to be a people that know every day that we need you, that that don't feel capable capable without without you. God, God, knowing knowing that when when we're we're weak, weak, we're strong, and when we're strong, we're weak. weak. When When we're we're fools, fools, we're wise. wise. And when we're wise, we're we're just just fools. fools. God, forgive us for being able to do this Christianity thing thing, almost without without even stopping stopping to pray, pray, because it's just things things we do. God, make make ours a Christianity that can't be done without you. God, I just pray for all those who have not been able to join us in worship today. I just pray that they are experiencing your presence, whatever they're doing, wherever they are. God, I ask you to baptize us afresh in your spirit this morning. And God, as we turn to you in prayer, I just ask that 
by your your grace, grace, Lord, your your spirit spirit would commune commune with our our spirits. spirits. And draw draw us up up into into you. you. Let's just take take a few few moments moments of, uh, you're joining joining us online online or here in the room. Let's Let's just take, take, we're going to pray pray in silence silence this time. time. Let's Let's just just lift lift up our hearts hearts to God right now. God, thank you for being the living God in whose presence we sit. Thank you for being the living God who meets us. Not in the storm, not in the wind, but in the quiet place. God, we thank thank you for being the the very ground of our existence. existence. The very very one who holds holds the universe universe together. together. The God God who is being being itself. itself. Without Without whom nothing nothing would be. be. God, God, focus focus our hearts hearts upon upon you today. today. And God, God, that we might might bind bind our hearts hearts together together in prayer. prayer. We pray pray that that prayer that your son Jesus Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It is good to worship God. Amen. It is good to worship God. Praise God. Uh, well, welcome to Bastion Island Community Church, if you didn't know where you were. Uh, my name is uh, Mike. I'm the pastor here, and it is uh, a privilege to worship God with you this morning. Uh, for anyone joining, joining us online, online thank you so, so much for worshiping with us today. today. And, uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to just, uh, just, uh, just want to give everybody a reminder, if you do want to continue to worship God with your giving, uh, with tithes, tithes and offerings, and offerings or, 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 or any gift to the church, you can do so at uh, bashonchurch.com slash giving. You can also give your offering right back there in the offering box uh, by the fire extinguisher. And uh, that's, uh, I know God, God loves a cheerful giver, and so I appreciate every person who supports the ministry of this church and uh, honors God with, uh, with their abundance. So thank you for that. Amen. Uh, at this point in the service, I think we're just going to uh, skip over announcements, and we're going to head straight into our text today. So let's go ahead and find uh, Mark chapter 14. We're going to look at verses 22 to 26 this morning. The rest of uh, the Mark's account of Jesus' Last Supper. And we're going to take some time and think about 
think about communion. Think about the communion meal that we partake of every Sunday. And what, what does that mean? We're going to look at uh, what Bible commentators call the institution of the Lord's Supper. We're just going to focus on Mark's account. So found uh, Mark chapter 14, verses 22 to 26. Uh, if you need a Bible, uh, we got Bibles in the back. We also got Bibles out in the foyer you can take with you if you'd like. Uh, and I believe the text will also appear uh, on the screen as well. So we're in the second half of the section uh, that the NIV marks the Last Supper. Probably every Bible translation is going to have it marked in some similar way. And as I said, uh, Mark chapter 14, verses 22 to 26. We're going to pray and ask God's grace upon this word. Amen? Amen. Mark writes and says, While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples. Uh, while they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to them, Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word. Let's pray. Oh, living God, we just pray that you would uh, bless us as we look into your word, Lord. I pray you'd Bless the people in the back trying to solve some kind of technical issue. Lord, I pray you just uh, turn our hearts towards you and your word right now. Lord, I pray you would just speak to us and just make this meditation upon the meaning of the communion meal significant to us today. Help us to value more deeply what we do when we worship you. And Lord, may you make much of your son this morning in us. Amen. Amen. Well, well, what does it mean to participate in the Lord's Supper, in communion? Um, as some traditions call it the Eucharist, which is the word for thanksgiving. Uh, the Lord's Supper has been called a meal, a symbol of unity that has divided Christians for centuries. Different traditions have different interpretations of what it means. Uh, many different denominations, communion table is actually closed if, if you're not a baptized member of that denomination. It's why uh, for years, if uh, you were part of this church when Frank Davis was the pastor, he always would say that, that for us, this is not a denominational table because technically, in a lot of traditions, if you're not a part of that tradition, you, you're not supposed to take communion at that church. And yet within Scripture, it's a symbol of the unity of the body of Christ. The only, the only sin, often people read, you know, read 1 Corinthians and think, oh, if I partake of the Lord's Supper unworthily, I won't be able to, you know, God will curse me or something like that. And so we think we have to have not sinned that week or, or have no besetting sins in our life or something silly like that. But if you read 1 Corinthians, the only way you can actually sin with the Lord's Supper is to not live in loving community with your fellow Christians while you partake. That's the only sin. That's the only unworthily you can do. You just look at it. What, what Paul is saying, the criticism he gives of the Corinthians is that uh, the rich make a feast of the meal and they leave the poor out of it. And they're failing to discern the body and so they eat the meal unworthily. What an irony that within the church, the symbol of unity, the only way of which you can take it unworthily is to live disunited from other Christians is the very, sim the very meal that symbolizes our disunity as Christians, that Catholics can't partake with Protestants and Protestants can't with Catholics and Baptists can't with Lutherans and Lutherans can't with Baptists and on and on it goes. In the ancient church, the communion meal was thought of as the medicine that heals our souls. By the Middle Ages, Christians had begun to believe 
that the bread and the cup would literally transform under the priests praying the prayer into the body, the literal body and blood of Jesus. Most Protestant churches today think of the meal either as, as a memorial meal, just something we're doing just to remember that Jesus died and he said to do it, so I guess we should do it. Or you think of it as a sacrament, a symbol of Christ's death in which Christ does meet us by his spirit when we partake, much as Jesus is present where two or three gather in his name, where God in, inhabits the praises of his people, so he meets us in the meal. The Jewish roots of, the com of communion is that it's a covenant meal. The immediate context, as we'll see, is is the Passover, where, where God marks out his children from the surrounding Egyptian culture that they partake of this Passover meal and they use the blood of the lamb of the meal to the Seder meal, um, as Jews call it today, to sort of mark the doorposts of their house. And some Egyptians actually did the same thing, and they were also spared. Some foreigners actually let, did wind up leaving with the Israelites, if you read the story of the Exodus. And this meal marked them out as God's people as opposed to the broader culture. And all throughout Scripture, you'll notice many other covenantal meals as well. You see in Genesis, when, when two people, they make an agreement or two enemies kind of like come up with, a, okay, I guess we won't kill each other if you stay on that side of the river and I stay on this side of the river, like we'll be good. And the, the agreement is always sort of ratified in the slaying of an animal and the eating of a meal together. That was sort of their version of signing a contract. As we sit down, we, we eat together, and that symbol, that marks us out as having been in covenant. We've made this agreement, this treaty with one another. So as we head into our text today, which I'm, it's so short, I'm just going to read it again. I'm just going to pick out little phrases. The sermon's going to be a little different, and we're just going to kind of look through what the communion meal is. I'll just read 22 to 26 again, and we'll look at it. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take it, this is my body. The bread. If you've ever partaken of a Seder meal, if you've ever seen a Passover meal, you know that the meal begins by the host of the meal standing up and taking some bread and tearing it apart and breaking it. And so Jesus opens the Seder meal by taking the bread and declaring, this bread is my body and tearing it apart. In context... Jesus probably speaking Aramaic with his disciples. The phrase Jesus used would have meant more to them like the phrase, this is my life, more than this is my, my meat and bones. In the Jewish context, particularly in the context of the Seder meal, the symbolic nature of the language would have been obvious. In the context of the Seder meal, you say, this is the bread our fathers ate. The parents say to the children, when we were in Egypt, there's this sense of symbolic participation that would have just been known to the nature of what's happening. Jesus was right in front of them. Clearly, he wasn't literally saying the bread was his body. Further than that, we know as Christians, as we know with the rest of the story of Christ's cross and resurrection, Jesus' body wasn't torn limb from limb, but Jesus tears the bread apart. The bread doesn't represent the meat. Jesus' is meat. It represents his life. Jesus stands up, tears the bread apart, and says, this is my life. Now, 
Verse 23, then he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it, passed a single cup around, as many uh, traditions do, not during COVID times. This is my blood of the covenant, he says, which is poured out for many. The cup. Within the Seder meal, there's four cups. Expositors can't agree whether this is the third cup or the fourth cup in the meal. But the bread was basically partaken at the beginning, and the cup is towards the end. And we know this is actually how the early Christians celebrated communion. They celebrated it in the context of a meal they called agape. And they would partake of the bread at the beginning, and they would feast together, and then they would drink to the Lord's death at the end, the cup. And that's how the Corinthian, rich Corinthians were able to have enough food to get fat and drunk while the poor Corinthians sat at the poor table with nothing to eat. It's because it was a feast, not because they were just mowing on communion wafers uh, and just throwing back thimbles of wine. But Jesus takes the cup and he says, this is my blood poured out. And like the language, this is my body, meaning this is my life. To say this is my blood poured out. To the Jewish mind would, is saying, this is my death. The idea of drinking blood would have been repulsive to the Jews. It was in fact forbidden in the law. So even symbolically, Jesus isn't saying, hey, drink some of my blood. And we can talk about the language Jesus uses in John 6, but you'll notice Jesus' language in John 6, not in the context of the meal, but he, you know, after the feeding of the 5,000, he says, hey, you need to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood or you don't have life. It turns the crowd away. He, he goes from a congregation of 5,000 to a congregation of 12 in that very moment. So in saying this cup is my blood poured out, he's inviting his disciples to drink to his death. Not to symbolically drink his blood, but to drink to his death. And so more than symbolizing two things, Jesus' meat and Jesus' blood, the communion meal symbolizes two sides of the same thing. Jesus' life given over to death. Jesus says, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Some manuscripts say new covenant. You know, the different accounts in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and in 1 Corinthians kind of have slightly different wording. So you notice the, the wording we do in church is usually kind of based on Paul's account in Corinthians and also kind of a hodgepodge of all the accounts. But this is Jesus' blood of his covenant. We already saw the communion meal is a covenant meal. And to cut a covenant with someone involved a sacrifice and sitting down to eat together. And for a covenant, you want to think of a marriage between a man and a woman. You want to think of a treaty between nations. You want to think of, you don't want to just think of like a business contract where if you've got a really good lawyer, you can get out of it kind of a thing. Where there's loopholes and whatnot. Where it's like, it's relational and there's also honor to it. There's some real honor to this relationship. If you break, if you break a uh, business contract, if you got a good lawyer, then hey, you win. Good job. Way, way to go. You're, you're, real, you're real sneaky. If you break a treaty, you are an absolutely dishonorable person. And if you break a marriage covenant, you're unfaithful. And 
And Jesus says this covenant is sealed in his blood. Poured out for many. As we've already seen, the Passover lamb's blood marked out believers, Israelites and non-Israelites, who applied the blood to their doorpost so that they were spared the judgment on the firstborn that went across Egypt. So the lamb died instead of the people. The lamb was substituted for the firstborn in those homes, particularly the homes of the the Egyptians who followed suit. In dying on the cross, Jesus entered into our estranged and divided and alienated existence to deliver us from it. This is my blood of the covenant poured out for many. Verse 25, and truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. So, The communion meal, in their moment, obviously had, was forward-looking to Christ's death. In our time, place and time and space, it looks back. But even for us, communion is still has a forward-looking element to it. As we quote from Paul in 1 Corinthians, when we participate in the communion meal, we, every time we eat this meal, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, Paul says. Jesus' vow not to drink wine again in, in, until he can drink it new in the kingdom of God is his way of showing his commitment to the coming of this kingdom. He's making a vow. You can't go, well, Jesus is in heaven. Like, they probably don't have bars up there. That was real handy on his part, you know. But what Jesus is doing is he's making a vow. He's saying, I abstain from wine until the world is made new in God's kingdom. It's a promise. And now that Christ has died and risen again and been poured out on his church by his spirit, there is a sense in which we right now are in the kingdom of God and we do commune with Jesus in the communion meal by his word and by his spirit. He's present with us and we commune with him. But the kingdom is also not yet. Jesus isn't physically in the room with us holding up a glass of wine, toasting his father's kingdom. This is somewhat less than a feast. So we commune with Jesus now even as we wait to commune with him one day. And so as we partake of the communion meal together, let's remember it's our covenant meal with God in Christ. It looks back to Christ's death as a memorial meal. It points right now to Jesus' real presence with us by his spirit. And the meal is our participation in his death. As again, Paul says in 1 Corinthians, that do not those who partake of the altar have koinonia, fellowship, participation with the altar? He warns against having koinonia with demons by partaking of pagan sacrifices. That translates right over to the Lord's Supper. When we partake of the Lord's Supper, we have koinonia with the Lord, his real presence as he meets us in the meal. And communion is also 
forward looking. It's our symbol of hope. It's our symbol of hope in Christ's return. So if we're believers in Jesus, let's value the Lord's Supper and all that it means for us. Amen? Amen. Well, uh, let's go ahead and have the, the band come on back up. Uh, if anyone is joining us uh, from home, this is a good time to grab whatever elements you want to use for the communion meal. And over the course of this next song, what I'll invite people to do is stand up and, and uh, when you're ready... Uh, Dan's ready right now, but the rest of us will wait till the song's over. So um, just grab the elements and head back to your seat down the outside and uh, wait to partake. Use, use the song to get it open, uh, but wait to partake uh, so we can all partake together. Uh, the gifts of God for the people of God. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead and stand up in the house of God if you are able, and let's worship the Lord this morning. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies. Oh, dear, all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Drowned in perfect love You rescued me so I could stand and sing I am a child of God You split the sea so I could walk right through My fears were drowned in perfect 
As we saw, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, a little bit bigger than this. It was quite a bit bigger than this, really. And he broke it. And he said, this is my, my body. This is my life. Broken for you. The living God became the broken God. That broken people could have life. Let's eat. The same way after supper, we're told, he took the cup. Saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you. Let's drink together. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. Amen. Amen. Let's worship God with another song. Oh, Jesus, let your kingdom come here. Let your will be done. There is no one greater, you alone are Savior, show the world your love. King of heaven, come down, King of heaven, come down, let your glory reign, shining like the day, King of heaven, come. Heaven rise up, who can stand against us? You got strong to say in your mighty name, King of Heaven come. We are the children of your mercy, risking for your glory. We cry, Jesus. Our hearts to hold you Every eye would see you Lifted high King of heaven come down King of heaven come down Let your glory reign Shining like the day King of heaven come King of heaven rise who can stand against us? You are strong to say in your mighty name, to your heaven come.
Jesus, oh Jesus, King of heaven, God, King of heaven, come down, King of heaven, come down, let your glory reign, shine in light the day. One more time. Come down, King of heaven, come down. Let your glory reign, shine in light the day. King of heaven, come. King of heaven, rise up. Who can stand against us? You are strong to save. Oh, Jesus, King of heaven, come, King of heaven, come. Amen, amen, amen. World without end. Living Lord Jesus, we just do invite you to come. Lord, come into our lives right now that as we go out, we would be ambassadors of your goodness. Lord God, we invite you, Lord Jesus, we invite you, King of heaven, to come by your spirit and your word and your church into this world that doesn't know you, that is estranged from you, and senses no real need for you. Thank you very much. And Lord Jesus, come. Come and establish your reign on this earth. Make this world brand new. That the knowledge of the Lord would cover this earth as the waters cover the sea. That the lion would lay down with the lamb. that the world would know actual peace and shalom without hidden motives as the peace in this world so often has. Jesus, we just confess as we head into the, the dark and rainy months, the weather is a metaphor for the need we have for you to enter more deeply into our lives and to come and bring a true and final spring to this earth. God, send us out in your grace, we ask in your name. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. Share the love of Jesus with each other. Share the love of Jesus with this world that needs it so much. Drink our coffee. Uh, Anyone who's joined us from home, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for worshiping with us as well. Uh, may we go out in his peace. Amen. Amen. God bless.
Drum Solo. 